Academic integrity. What is it? Academic integrity is the idea that you are learning materials honestly and that your work is a result of your understanding and efforts as they apply to the material presented in class. Sometimes the focus is on academic dishonesty and students are told what not to do. I prefer to focus on what students are expected to do. Students should recognize that instructors are presenting valuable information to develop a strong foundation of knowledge, and this foundation is divided into many disciplines. However, those disciplines are interdependent and together build well-balanced individuals that make up our communities. Within these communities, there are many people with specialties and they interact with each other. It is critical for people to understand each other, especially if from a different discipline, culture, generation, and so on. Teachers have the responsibility to present the material in a format appropriate for the students to learn and may include lecture, facilitating discussion, providing reading materials, activities, and projects as appropriate. It is important for the students to feel they can work together to understand issues at hand and this applies to class assignments as well. However, it is the responsibility for the students to learn the material and that occurs best when doing their own coursework. Instructors don't expect all students to grasp every concept when they simply hear or see it, especially the first time. It is the practice, application, and manipulation of ideas that helps students understand, and that is the purpose of most assignments. And the more often those ideas are practiced, the stronger the concepts are understood. So appreciate the opportunity to learn the concepts and apply them by participating in the discussions, doing the work, and taking the time to absorb the information. There are four main types of academic dishonesty, such as plagiarism, cheating, fabrication, and abetting. Plagiarism is when you include ideas in your own work from others and do not cite where it came from or fail to cite it correctly. This often happens in research projects that require students to get information from other sources to back up their claims. Also, submitting a research paper that someone else did is plagiarism. The original student may have done very well, but each student needs to do and submit their own work. When incorporating work of others, it is important to give credit to the person that developed the idea using the appropriate citation format. There are several different citation styles. MLA and APA are the two most commonly used at the college level. MLA stands for the Modern Language Association and is the style most frequently used in the humanities, such as languages, literature, theater, paintings, sculpture, and so on. APA stands for the American Psychological Association and is used in many of the social sciences and health sciences such as psychology, education, and nursing. The AMA also has a style for the American Medical Association, but most undergraduate health science programs use the APA. There are several other styles such as the CSE for the Council of Scientific Editors and the Chicago Manual style. I encourage you to talk to your advisor or someone that teaches the upper division courses for your program and find out what style is required for the program. Many students simply choose the easiest style for their classes, but this leads to frustration and confusion. Although you choose your degree program to study, the style you use is determined by the profession of the faculty in your department. For this class, you will need to use the style for your degree program. Later in the semester, you will need to have the style manual used in your area of study or the writer's resource, which has a section on citation styles. Some students are confused about what to cite, and my general rule is to cite anything new to you. There are some instructors that specify that students should not cite any material from an encyclopedia or other reference source, although I learn something new each time I open an encyclopedia. Many professions consider encyclopedia articles to present common knowledge for the profession and do not want that material cited. However, common knowledge varies depending on the audience. 
For example, high school graduates would consider the Pledge of Allegiance to be common knowledge. Chemistry students would consider the Periodical Table of Elements to be common knowledge. Medical doctors would consider many diagnostic practices common knowledge, and they have to be explained in simple terms for their patients. The bottom line is to simply cite anything new to you, anticipating that it is probably new to your audience as well. The other forms of academic dishonesty are just as problematic as plagiarism. Fabrication is simply making up citation information and using that false information in your citation. Even in the correct format, the citation is not valid. Cheating usually refers to having answers or other information for a test or other assessment tool, or having someone else do your coursework for you. This is different from working in study groups or help from a friend, because in those cases you are doing the work, although you need help to understand the material. Abetting is helping anyone in any form of academic dishonesty and will receive the same disciplinary action as the person who submitted the work. Almost everyone has known someone that cheated in some way in school. Think about that person. Did you respect them? If this happened in college, how would you feel if they graduated? Would you trust them as your doctor, lawyer, accountant? You want to learn the material needed to perform professionally in your degree and with the trust and respect your peers and clients. Academic dishonesty is a major problem at many colleges and universities. The instructor has the discretion to determine what should be done as a consequence of the dishonesty. Most instructors consider an inaccurate citation to be a learning experience and will work with the student. However, when inaccuracies and lack of citation information are done more than once, more severe consequences are warranted, and often the student is expelled from the institution or degree program if it's a repeat offense. The guidelines for dealing with any form of academic dishonesty are in the ISU Student Handbook at this link, beginning on page 36. While often students are trying to keep up with their classes, there are many tempting things to draw you away. Work and family commitments limit your time to do your coursework, and the time to commute to classes takes another portion of the day. When do you have time to do your coursework? It is important to plan two to three hours each day for each hour of class time to read the material, do assignments, and study class notes. All of these work together to help understand the concepts presented, and rushing through any part of that will compromise what you learn. Poor time management is the biggest reason students have difficulty getting their coursework completed and the major reason for resorting to academic dishonesty. The second most common problem in getting coursework completed is that students are not confident in their abilities to do a good job on the coursework, so they ask someone for help who ends up doing it for them. Instructors don't expect perfection from their students and would prefer students attempt the assignment and do poorly rather than have someone else do it for them. If the student does poorly, the instructor usually can assess where the student has problems and work with him or her. Without that sample of the student's work, an instructor often doesn't understand why the student is having problems. Students need to feel comfortable asking questions and working through the material. So make sure you have time to address and clarify any material that is unclear. The third common reason for academic dishonesty is poor organization, poor note-taking, or poor study and research skills. Students should take notes during lectures, reading course materials, and any time material is presented for a class. It doesn't matter if the information is already known by the student. If it is mentioned in class, Students need to recognize that it will be referred to by the instructor with the expectation that the students know and understand the concept as it applies to this discipline. Also, it is important to have careful notes about where ideas are found, especially in research, so keep your notes organized. Many times, students get bogged down with the amount of work required and are overwhelmed with the depth of understanding needed to do the coursework. Make sure you plan time to attend all of your classes, read and do all of your coursework. That is the biggest key to success for all students.